Welcome to Total Recall Part This Many. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're doing part five of the Total Recall. Uh, we're basically, uh, we're going to finish it up today. We're doing a lot of Photoshop. Um, I've, in between part four and part five, I went ahead and did more of the tiles, so you'll be able to see that in just a second. And uh, basically we're going to be working on the background and integrating that with the foreground, adding some cool blurs and things like that. And then we're going to color the image and give it that like cool movie poster uh, title. So it's gonna be great. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We got a ton to do again, and um, it's gonna be great. Let's get into it. So this is the group that I created the tiles. Basically the same thing that I showed you guys um, at part four, uh, I'm doing the same thing over and over again here with just a bunch of different tiles. Now the tiles look really great, um, but we want a little bit more information in these because they're all just about the same size. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna click and drag that here to the new layer icon, and then I'm gonna hit Command E. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all those different groups and put them together in just one layer. So I have basically the same thing now, again, and it's just in one layer. Um, I'm gonna shrink this down like super, super small. And this is gonna be like little pieces of shrapnel, things like that. So you can see, instead of having to go through and do you know each individual group, um, I'm just gonna do the entire thing at the same side, at the same time. And you know what, I'm just gonna bring that down here. So this is, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of this in the original movie poster itself. There was a little bit of it, um, but I just thought it would be kind of cool to add a little bit more of this sort of thing, you know, like debris or, you know, little, little bits and pieces that were kind of flying off. Um, so that's what this is gonna be there. All right, so I'm just hit, hitting Command J a couple times and that's duplicating it over and over again. And then I'm gonna make it really small and then just make this like little, you know, like little things that were, you know, flying off there, just tiny bits of shrapnel. And you can, um, you don't have to keep it like as it is. You can like flip these things around, um, flip them horizontally and vertically to make them look different uh, each time. Uh, totally up to you. It's just gonna help add a little bit more of this effect. Um, there we go, that looks pretty good. And then maybe put one right there as well. Okay, now all those together, I'm gonna shift click all those and hit Command E as well. So those are now all on the same, all on the same layer as well. And I'm gonna just use my brush tool at you know flow of something about 40% and just kind of erase some of these things away because they're you know just a little bit too visible in some places. So just erasing them away is gonna help give it a little bit more depth and uh, just make it look a little bit better. So here's with and without that layer mask. Just gives it, you know, a little bit like, you know, some might be movement, you get some motion blur and things like that. Okay, so that's all of those things um, back in the uh, in the background. Now again with the jacket, if you want to do this, I'm, I'm just gonna try this. I'm gonna duplicate my whole group again, and then I'm gonna move this down here, and like if you wanted more detail or, you know, more shrapnel, things like that coming off your jacket, um, you could do that just by duplicating the whole group. And oftentimes, especially if you flip or transform something like this group or change the color of it, um, you're not gonna notice a whole lot that it's just you know, pretty much direct copy. Um, I'm gonna grab a color that's in the jacket and kind of just paint everywhere and then change this down to color. And there we go. And then let's just go ahead and click on that group. I'm gonna go to my levels here and just make sure I don't want uh, this, any of this to be really that light. So we're just gonna go ahead and darken that up again. So that's just you know a bit more detail there on the jacket if we want to do that. Don't have to do it, but it just you know it'll add quite a bit more. Okay, cool. So that's basically our foreground and all the you know all the elements there with the jacket flying off and things like that. Now what I want to do is I want to work on my background, and that's right here. My background's here. Above that, I'm going to grab my gradient tool. So I'm going to hit G for the gradient tool, grab a radial gradient, and then I'm going to grab this color here, and we're just going to start creating some gradients. Um, so with this tool, I just created a radial gradient, and now you can just kind of like stretch it and move it around um, to be where you want it. Um, what I'm trying to do here is, you know, basically show off some more of this stuff. And so to show it off a little bit better, um, I just want to make sure that, you know, it, if it's like dark on dark, you're not going to see it that well. If it's a dark bit of shrapnel on a little bit lighter of a background, you're just going to see it a little bit better. So that's why I'm kind of lightening that up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better there. Okay, now you can do the same thing with dark if you wanna to do too. Let's just make a new layer. Um, I'm gonna make a 
grab a color and just grab this over here and then I'm going to change this layer from normal to soft light and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of darken this area you can see um, my soft layer soft light layer rather it's just darkening the area and the reason I'm doing that is just kind of draw attention away from this area so that's like you know in just a little bit we've taken something that's flat and flat and made it a little bit more dynamic so nothing you know nothing too dramatic here it's just like um, there we go actually I, I want to do the other opposite with that um, just giving a little bit more contrast and adding some definition to it all right and this again I'm changing to soft light let's make this again a little bit lighter this time nice soft brush all right very cool so just these couple layers that I made just now let's see shift click them hit command G you can see they changed the image made it just a bit more dynamic and also had the you know this sort of thing stands out a little bit more so that's looking great the next thing I want to do I want to take the background and actually blur it over the foreground and the reason I'm going to do this is because um, these things are supposed to be moving these tiles are supposed to be moving off in space and oftentimes you'll get a little bit of motion blur and what happens when you photograph motion blur is some of the light from behind an object shows up in front of the object so I'm going to select some colors in the background then give it a little bit of blur and then I'm going to put that on the foreground over top of everything and it's going to really sell that effect make it kind of look like the light from the background is peeking over these tiles and uh, this is kind of an advanced technique but it's going to really help if you guys are compositing things light tends to like wrap around your subject so that's that's what we're going to imitate now so I'm going to create a new layer above everything we're going to go to select and then down to color range and then here I'm just going to click on my light color range so this is the light color that I want to be kind of wrapping around everything and let's just brighten that up and then hit OK. So it basically turns all that light area into a selection. Now, what I want to do, I need to fill this with the color that's in the background. I need to fill it with, you know, exactly what's in the background, then it'll get blurred. So I'm going to make a stamp visible layer, Shift Option Command E, and that's going to create basically a layer that's everything that you can see. And then my selection still active, I'm going to hit Command J. Okay, I know that was a little bit advanced, but it is, um, it's kind of cool. Basically, we just made a selection of the lights. We duplicated everything so I could, you know, have something in my selection. And then we put whatever's in that selection on a new layer. So let's just delete the stamp visible layer, and I'll show you guys what we have. We have just the lights now. As I move them around, you can see, and they are duplicate of what the layer is underneath. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command-J, and uh, that's going to duplicate the layer. Let's just zoom in, and I'll show you guys what I was talking about there with the blur. So we've got this lighter area. Now we're going to go to filter, blur, and I'm going to go to motion blur. There we go. And we're going to blur it this way and just kind of bring our distance up a little bit. There we go. And you can see what that's doing here. It's, it's, it's kind of making some of the light like peek over front of our tiles. And it's making them look like they're actually floating through the air instead of just like, really stagnant which is really cool and it you know it kind of gives like the glow around your subject things like that too this other layer I'm gonna use as well I'm gonna just do a regular Gaussian blur on this there we go just a little bit bigger something like that so the lights really creeping out and then we're gonna lower the opacity so this is a question of like style but you can see it really does add now the other thing that I'd like to do is I've got all these tiles I want to give them a little bit of motion blur too so let's just see our different tile groups here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group our different tile groups. There we go. Group that. And to keep from destroying my information, I'm going to make a copy of everything because I'm about to do a blur. And a blur on this much information would just, it would destroy everything if I merged all together first. So I've got, I've got my merged layer, but then I've got the copy with everything intact in it too. All right. And we're going to go to filter. Blur, and I'm going to go to motion blur again, and that's going to give these tiles a, mo a bit of a blur. Not so much, um, you know, but a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? This is kind of cool. I'm going to give the tiles a motion blur, but I, instead of just having that layer visible, I made a duplicate, so we've got a still layer and a motion blur layer right on top of that, so we don't lose all of our detail, but they do look like they are starting to, you know, blur and move a little bit more. Okay. There we go. So you can see that's the that's with the blur on and that's with the blur off. Just kind of helps it give it a little bit of movement and make it look like it's actually doing something, which is very cool. 
Okay, so we've got our background. We've kind of brought it over the foreground with that um, with that really cool trick of selecting out the background and bring it over the foreground. Um, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to just take a couple layers and we're just going to do on top of everything now. The same thing like I did with the soft light on the background, we're going to do that over top of everything. So I'm going to grab my soft light adjustment layer. We're just going to grab a, a brush and choose a nice light color. And now I'm going to paint over top of everything. And that's just going to kind of lighten some of these areas up and bring in the color that we want to as well. All right. Very cool. This is looking great, guys. It's actually almost done. Um, we're not going to worry too much about type. Um, we've gone over type and things like that before. There we go. There's our, our light that's kind of coming over there. Okay, the last thing I want to do is our color. Sorry, I'm like looking around this image. It's getting pretty complex. Normally when I work on an image like this, I you know group everything together and you know start to name things and whatnot. Um, but we're just kind of running real quick on this. Okay, the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer and go to levels. And I'm going to grab our blue channel and grab my output level right here on our blues and drag that in and do the same with my output level on the for the, for the lights and for the darks. And greens, I'm going to put a little bit more green in my darks as well. Let's just take that down to, let's try three instead. Um, and what this is going to do, because it's on top of everything, you guys can see it's basically coloring. We just hit tab. It's coloring everything at the same time. Um, it's on top of everything. It's going to take your darks and take it to the color you want. And it's going to take do the same thing with your lights. So doing this sort of thing, especially when you guys are using a composite, it's just going to help color everything kind of back to the same values. And it's going to give the image like a just more complete look than anything else. All right. You know what we're going to do a little bit of type. We got, we got time. The, it, I think this is an awesome image, by the way. It's very, very cool. And we're almost done with it. Um, the last thing we are, let's go ahead and do some type. I was going to ignore it, but you know what? We got time because that worked with the quickness and I hope you guys are following along. Okay. All right, so we're going to grab our type tool, and apparently it's going to take forever. And I'll show you guys how to do this. All right, and I'm just going to type in total and recall. Now, you can't see it um, because we have a lot of things that we need to do with our character. So let's go to character. We're going to bring up our character window. Go ahead and close out properties. And I also want to bring in our paragraph window. Okay, so paragraph and character basically the character defines what these letters look like and paragraph is how they're laid out so we want them to be uh, center aligned not left or right so that's all we need to do with the paragraph window center align them we're going to turn on all caps i'm going to bring in our font spacing so basically it's going to space these further and further apart there we go and we're going to look for a font that's a little bit closer to uh, the font that they actually use in the uh, in the movie itself. Okay, and the font is a little bit stretched. Normally, I, I don't, I'm not in favor of stretching fonts, but I think the font is just a little bit stretched here anyway. Um, so that's why we're stretching it again. And this is the spacing in between lines here. All right, let's stretch it a little bit less, and we'll bring the letter spacing in just a little bit as well. All right. So kind of messing with each one of these, we're able to get a font that looks really close. Um, oftentimes with movie posters and things like that, uh, advertisements and companies, they'll usually make a custom font. So the font that they used for the actual poster, it's not like Arial or Helvetica or anything like that. They, they take a font and then they customize it. So we don't have that custom font, but I'm just using Calibri or uh, whatever. It really doesn't work. You just want to be sure that um, you use a font that looks relatively similar and this one does. So that's it guys. This is the end of part five, making our total recall. This is a very, very cool tutorial. We showed you guys everything from taking the photographs and conceptualizing all the way through to the Photoshop. And I hope you guys super enjoyed it because I super enjoyed making it. <laughs> that's right. Super enjoys a word now. Thanks so much for watching Florin guys. I'll learn you later. Yay. I'm going to super enjoy your face.